you said before that emotions rule in the organizational setting. We all know that, but we're, we're fairly immature in, in the way that we deal with emotions and let them unspool um, at work, maybe even more immature than we are in our, our, our regular uh, waking lives with our other relationships. How do you actually sort of start someone on a journey of saying, okay, this is how you lead a, a healthy emotional life inside an organization? I do believe that emotions play a powerful and often unacknowledged role in the uh, degree to which organizations are effective um, because how you feel so influences how you perform and uh, as I said earlier there are specific ways that you need to feel in order to perform well and there are all kinds of things that happen in the course of a workday that interfere with your feeling that way. Here's the biggest single insight I think we've had in this work around, um, and it is around emotions. And it's that any time, and let's just talk about it in the workplace, any time that you find yourself moving into negative emotion, it, or, or being triggered, as we call it, it can almost invariably be traced to a challenge, to a perceived challenge to your value to the feeling that you are being devalued or not respected or not cared for or not acknowledged, all of those as, as part of the same constellation of experiences of feelings. And that, as simple an insight as it is, is incredibly powerful because what it suggests is that it's not what's going on around you that's accounting for why you move into these dysfunctional negative states. It's what's going on inside you. And if you take one more leap around that, you, you, you realize that the same thing that makes you move dramatically into the negative zone might have no impact on the person next to you which itself suggests that it's not about what the other person's doing. It's about something that's going on inside you. So what we've done to deconstruct this and make it simple and take it out of the realm of psychotherapy and you know uh, messy emotions is really to say there are these four different, as it turns out, it's another four, these four zones of emotion, these four feelings that people have at any given time during the day, and it's incredibly simple. You feel what we would call high positive energy, high negative energy, low negative energy, and low positive energy. So that's impossible to remember, probably in terms of any meaningful uh, way of using it. Let me reframe it as the names of those places, the names of those zones. So there's a performance zone, that's high positive. There's a survival zone, that's high negative. That's the fight or flight state that we default to most readily when we're triggered, when something happens that makes us feel devalued. Low negative is the burnout zone. I don't need to say more about that. Spend too much time in the survival zone, you'll end up in the burnout zone. It's the least effective place from which to perform. And then there's this low positive zone, which is actually the renewal zone. All day long, Polly, we move back and forth at work between the high positive zone, if you're reasonably successful at your work, and the high negative zone. Because very few people can spend much time in low negative and survive at work. It's not a, it's not a place that you can work effectively from. But you can work, if not at the highest level, certainly at a at, at an acceptable level in high negative. So people move back and forth between high positive and high negative, but high negative is a place, even though they don't even realize they're moving there, where you don't think as well, where your prefrontal cortex tends to shut down, so you're less imaginative, you're more narrow in your thinking, you're not as long-term. It has all kinds of cognitive impact on how you perform. And what we're teaching is to tell people how to move from high positive down into low positive, from performance down into renewal. Because what happens is if you burn down the reservoir of energy, you're inevitably going to fall into negative emotion, fall into negative emotion. What we're introducing to people in this incredibly simple way is you can make a choice. You can intentionally, when you notice, where, that you're moving, uh, that you're running out of energy or that you're being pulled to the negative, you can choose to go to renewal. Well, renewal in organizations is a, is a, is a curse word. I mean, you know, it's a negative word. It's a, it's, a, it's a sign that you're a slacker. 
And so we've got to ennoble renewal as a means by which, as a critical component of sustainable high performance. The key to this way of looking at it is that it takes it out of the realm of judgment. So instead of saying to someone, you're an asshole for the way you behaved, prompting in that person a defensive response and basically two people who are drowning trying to pull each other down in order to survive, instead what you get is a very simple way to get people to talk about what's going on without feeling devalued in the process.